And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Welcome to Sounds of Revival, a program and teaching ministry calling for the church to hear and respond to the sounds of revival, which are calling us back to our first love and back to our place of holiness and dominion in the earth. Sounds of Revival is brought to you by Greater Love International Church and Revival Center, located here in the city of Indianapolis at 6433 East Washington Street, where the pastor and founder is Bishop Perry E. Jackson. And now, Sounds of Revival. Welcome to our program today, Sounds of Revival brought to you by Greater Love International Church and Revival Center right here in the city of Indianapolis. Again, it's a blessing to be here with you today. You know, the Bible did say Psalm 118, verse 24, this is the day that the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So this is God's day. So God should be in charge. And um, when God is in charge, not only does he take charge of things, but he talks to us. So this is a time for God to speak to our hearts, and God has put something on our heart for us that's going to bless us. Even, that's why I said this message is for us, because the Bible said that the husbandman must be first partaker of the fruit. Therefore, though I give the word, the same word that I give to you, it also applies to me. So when the Holy Spirit is talking through me, I'm listening also because I'm being fed as well. Because remember, it's the Holy Spirit who's doing the talking, not really me. I'm just a mouthpiece for God. And that's an interesting thought because in the meantime, even the way God deals with me as a minister, most of the time, I, um, he doesn't give me what to say until I um, open my mouth. I don't take notes or anything else. I study all, all week, not on a particular subject. I just study my Bible. And then when I come before the people, then God, he gives me a subject and tells me what to talk about. So it's not me talking. It's him. Like Luke chapter 4, verse number 18, the Bible said that um, Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the accessible year of the Lord. So we as ministers, even when we come before you, it, is not, it shouldn't be us talking. Now, I'm, unfortunately, sometimes ministers, they come before you and they give you, you heard the expression, I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. That's what some ministers do. They give you a piece of their mind. But the Bible said that we have the mind of Christ. So ministers, we don't preach or teach what we want to teach, but the Holy Spirit speaks through us, and we listen to God. And um, like we should be, like the Bible says in the book of um, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, 3, and 4, talking about how Jesus operated. Amen? The same way that Jesus operated, again, this Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, talks about how Jesus operated when he came. It's a prophecy of Jesus. So it said this, Isaiah chapter 11, verse number 2, it said, The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Jesus was a minister, right? Okay. And Isaiah prophesied his coming and what he was going to do and how he was going to let God use him. So he said, the, Isaiah 11 and 2, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge after his own eyes, neither will he speak after his own hearing. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. Notice that he will not judge by the sight of his own eyes, neither will he reprove after the hearing of his own ears. If you're a minister, you're listening to God. Isaiah chapter 50, verse number 4. The Lord and God hath given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. 
Watch this. He awakeneth morning by morning. He awakeneth my ear to hear as to learn. So as the minister hears, then he speaks. And then also when he speaks to other people, then he must know that he's supposed to do exactly. If God gives a command, then he is responsible for obeying those commandments as well. Amen. But let's not be like some preachers do. They say, do as I say do, but don't do as I do. That's bad news. That's bad news. Again, because that's how Jesus said, that's how the scribes and Pharisees did in, in, in his day. They say, do as I say do, but don't look at my life because you're going you, to be messed up. Amen. But your preacher, you should be able to look at the life of your preacher. His life should be preaching your message, not just with his mouth. Jesus said, there is a people that praise me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Just, just lip service. Yakety, 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 yak. Amen. They preach a good sermon, but live a raggedy, bad life. Bad life, but a good sermon. Oh, you can do that. Some people don't understand that. They think the preachers, if a preacher's, if he's anointed, then he's okay. No. Just because you are anointed, that doesn't mean that you are approved of God. Don't get that confused. Anointing can be up on you. God could use you, but yet he could still not be pleased with your life. But that gift that you have, is the gifts and calling of God are without repentance, okay? So this month, you know, sometimes some people say, oh, he preaches so good. Every time he preaches, my hair stands on end. Well, every time he preaches, um, I just get, uh, when he starts preaching, I faint. Just because you faint, the message might have been good, but that don't mean the preacher is where he should be. Amen. The Bible said again, Isaiah chapter 52, verse number 11, Be ye holy that bear the vessels of the Lord. Also in the book of James, the Bible talks about in James chapter 3, it said that, um, My brethren, be not many teachers, for we know that we shall receive the greater condemnation or the stricter judgment. God is going to hold ministers. Ministers are going to be held to a higher standard of accountability. Oh, yes. Jesus even talked about ministers. He said, you're going to receive ministers who preach one thing and then do another. He said, they're going to receive um, double damnation. I don't even know what that means. Hell is pretty damn, damn as it is. But he said, ministers who do wrong and say one thing and do another, they're going to receive double woe. I don't even want to know what that's all about. Amen. But they're, they're in double trouble. You're in big trouble. All right. So again, we're here today to give you what God has put on our heart. And uh, so we want to be prepared to hear from God. And then like Jesus' mother told the people in the book of St. John, chapter 2, verse number 5, she told those people when they're trying to make water for the wine, wine for water out of wine, he said, um, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. So let us start this sermon off and this message off. <clears throat> whatsoever we hear God tell us to do that, we're going to purpose in our heart to, purpose in our heart to just do it. Just do it. Just obey. Amen. Now the topic that we're using for today is um, <clears throat> a Sunday school picnic. Now, what does that mean? Well, sometimes things happen and they're contrasting that. Like, for example, some catastrophic thing that, ha that had happened in our generation, such as 9-11 um, and so many other things that you can talk about. Murder just over the weekend, five to six people died just like that. And then after the weekend, people kept on dying. Look at your newspaper, just, just horrendous things happening. People dying in so many different ways. And then people in war-torn war countries, people dying like flies, being slaughtered, ISIS on the rampage. So many things that you see in the newspapers, volcanoes erupting, so many things happening. But see, what you're seeing right now, the Bible says, when I use the term, like, terminology of Sunday school picnic, that the impending judgment upon the world today because of their sins, or well, why is this judgment going to be so bad? Why is the judgment that's going to come be worse than your worst nightmare? Why is the judgment that's going to come upon this generation going to be uh, worse than any other? Because why? Because mankind had become progressively worse, progressively worse. Instead of getting better, that's why the Bible said that in the book of Matthew chapter 24, verse number 12, it said, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. It gets worse and worse. 
And the more sin that you commit, then the, the greater the judgment. So that's why we're saying that as the church today is being called to turn back to God. You see, let me give you an understanding here. When, you, when we look at what is happening in the world today, oh, man, they're just gone. They, they lost their mind. Amen. They're calling good evil, and they're calling evil good. They're calling dark light, light dark. They're taking, they're calling up, down, and down, up. They're just doing all kind of filthy things. Television is filthy. Movies are filthy. They're teaching people the wrong things, teaching our, our kids it's all right to uh, go to bed with people as long as you use protection. What do you mean? What's going to protect you from the judgment of God? Amen. That's what you need to be concerned about, about being protected. Amen. But they're just giving kids the wrong ideas about what life is all about. You can just sin, do what you want to do, and you're going to be okay. You're not going to be okay. The Bible says that you can do all these things, but that you can sow to the wind, but you're going to reap the whirlwind. Glory to God. You're going to be sorry that you ever did those type those things. Sometimes people say, well, I can sin, and I, and I know I'm going to have to pay for it, but... Um, you don't understand. You don't understand the um, magnitude of the judgment that's going to come upon us for sin and being disobedient to God. And I'm not talking about sinners either. Glory to God, because right now, even our country, the reason our country is in the in the state that it's in, is because the church has lost its place in God. They've lost their place of holiness. They've lost their place of right standing with God. They've become lukewarm, like the Bible said in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 15, he said this. He said, I, ha he said, um, I would that you were hot or cold. Talking to his people now, one of the, the church of Laodicea, I would that you were hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. Why? Because bottom line, God's people have to come back to their place of reconcil reconciliation to God. Come back to the place of your first love. That's what revival is all about. The name of this very program is called Sounds of Revival. Amen. God calling his people back and his real people. And we have a short, we have a window of time to respond to it because after grace has been Grace to repent has been offered to us. Then God shuts that door. There will be no more time. Just like the um, the five wise virgins and five foolish virgins, five were wise and five were foolish, and five just played around and played around and played around. But there came a time when God said, "Playtime is over, and judgment time has to uh, commence to be." So. We have to understand that what I'm, what this, the topic is, um, a Sunday school picnic. So something that we're seeing on this earth that happened, well, they're going to happen in this generation. They're going to be multiplied because the judgment of God is coming upon all that sin. Now, we don't like to talk about those things. We like to talk about finances, which is good. We like to talk about being prosperous. We like to talk about being healed. We like to, like to talk about everything being wonderful. And that's fine. All that has its place. Like the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, it says, to everything there's a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to live and a time to die, a time to love and a time to hate, so on and so forth. So there's a time for everything. And it seems like now we need to hear a few messages that tell us that time is running out and that God's people need to choose ye this day whom ye will serve. And to understand that when God gives you that call, call to repentance, by the way, we think God is calling the sinner to repent. Yes, but he's calling his people to repent also. Repent means to stop to change from thinking carnally to thinking spiritually, to stop thinking in those ways that are going to drag you down. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse number 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Let's look at the chart here for a moment. God is still calling us back to a place of repentance, back to a place of thinking right, right thinking. Someone has used the terminology stinking thinking. And we have to get over that stinking thinking. We have to have the mind of Christ. 
glory to God. And let God speak to us. Now, here in this chart, again, we understand if you're born again, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creation. Old things or old thoughts are passed away. Behold, all thoughts are new. All thoughts are of God. You start thinking right, and then you start doing right. So God starts you off right. Just like when they are in the, in the temple, they had the outer court, inner court, and then the Holy of Holies. Now, in the inner court, they had to light that fire and keep it lit. When God lights the fire of salvation in your spirit, you have to keep it lit. You have to keep it going. Jeremiah chapter um, 15, verse 16 said this, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoice in my heart. The word of God in you, Jeremiah chapter 20, verse number 9, the Bible said this, that his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. You had to keep that fire going also. Look at, the, at what happened to the children of Israel over the course of time. They let the fire, the light, and the temple go out because it represented their being becoming lax, them straying away from their first love and straying away to thinking those carnal thoughts that they used to think, not keeping their mind on God. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 1, the Bible said this, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above and not those things which are below. Word of God. But seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God and set your affection on things above. You have to set your mind. After you're born again, you have the responsibility to set your mind on things above. Set your mind on God and let him teach you. Let him talk to you. Let him, like the Bible says in Psalm 32, verse number 7 and 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide you with my eye. So when you're born again, this man, the spirit man, he's okay. But now this other man, this soul man, that he needs to be taught. He needs to be brought into a place of accountability. He needs to be like Paul. The Paul said this first. I mean, Peter said this. Glory to God. First Peter, the Bible talks about this. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Okay? Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. In the life that I now live, in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So um, Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Galatians 2.20, okay? Crucified. This, this I, this soul man, the spirit man, this, this soul man and this flesh has to be crucified and denied. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. You have to deny yourself. You have to tell this body, you can't go where you want to go. You can't say what you want to say. You can't do what you want to do. You can't think like you want to think. But you have to come all the way back over and line it with the spirit man again, Colossians 3, 1 and 2, if you then be risen with Christ, you're born again, seek those things which are above and not those things which are on the earth. Seek those things. You have to go after God. The Bible again says in the book of um, Matthew chapter 5 that blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So you have to go after God. You have to, even as a Christian, you have to, the Bible says Isaiah chapter 55, verse number 6, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. This is talking to Christians. Too many times we think we think, we think well, the sinner need to seek God. That's true. But also the saint need to seek God. Throughout the Bible, that word seek and that word repent is, is applied more to saints than it is applied to sinners. Because what happens, the sinner can't get right until the, until the saints get right. Because they have no model. They have no... No, um, plat no platform, they have no, um, no um, example to look at. If the Christians are not where they should be, so the first thing is the church needs to be right. The church needs to repent. We must stay in a state of repentance before Almighty God because, as you heard me say before, and I had to re be redundant, that when God calls us to repentance and calls us to come to him and that he might clean us up, that he might bless us, Ephesians 3 and 20, God wants to bless you exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can even ask or think. So God calls you into a place of blessing. He calls, I want to bless you. I want to heal you. I want to prosper you. I want to make life wonderful for you. I want you to be like my son. I want you to walk in love. I want you to have the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 or 23. I want you to have the fruit of the Spirit in your life. 
What's the fruit of the Spirit? Nine fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, all this work in your life. Come unto me. I want you to act like Christians so that this world will have something to look at, that they will have something to follow. Now, when God calls us into this, calls us into a place of blessing, calls us as Christians, he says, stop acting like babies and stop acting like uh, you lost your spiritual mind and stop trying to have one foot in the world and one foot in church. He said, come unto me. He's calling you. I've got a better plan for you. Because all that, the, see, the Bible said the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, eternal life. God was saying, I'm calling you out of that sin not to hurt you, but to help you. All that those illicit sex, all the drugs, all the things you are doing, the place that you are hanging out, that's going to kill you. I'm, I'm offering you, I said it for you, life and death. So now, he said, all these, I want to do so many good things for you. I want to, I have a plan for your life. I have blessings that will blow your mind. Now, but if you, here it is. But there is an alternative. If you decide, I don't want the blessings of God, then the alternative is bad because there, there is no such thing as purgatory. There's heaven or hell. There's light or darkness, good or bad. Amen. You can't be in between and be blessed. So therefore, the, when we say, use the topic that, that there is a, uh, that a picnic, that this, a Sunday school picnic, do you think, the bad thing that come in your life, you think life is rough, life is tough, and life has been um, hard. You haven't seen anything yet. All the, the, the terrible things, some people even say, they've used terminology, I've been to hell. You haven't been to hell. You don't know what hell, you don't know what hell is until God loses some hell on you, and then you will know. What's God? So what we're saying, the alternative to real revival, the alternative to if you decide you don't want to come, I'm talking to Christians. If you decide I don't want to really get in church like I'm supposed to, I just, I just, like, to, I just like to go to church and I haven't really made my mind to, to do, do, do right like I'm supposed to, well then that, you're making a, the alternative to that is the judgment of God. See the Bible said in the book of Job chapter 14 verse number 1, Job chapter 14, verse number one, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower, but is cut down. He fleeth also like a shadow and continues not. Life is here today and gone today. And when you leave this, the Bible said, all said, also said in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse number one, two, and three, it said this, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. If you die, unholy, then you're going to rise on Christian. If you die with sin in your life, the Bible said it is once a point for men to die and after death the judgment. If you die with sin in your life, you're going to rise up with sin in your life. You're not going to die with sin in your life and then rise up and God going to act like nothing happened. No. Sin had consequences. Whole child of God. So when God called the church to revival, called the church to a higher place in Him, called the church to a place of holiness, called the church to a place of accountability, said, Be revived and come out of that dead state you're in. Come up higher, come alive in me and live like God is in you. Live like you know the God of creation. Live like God is a holy God. Live like God is your Father. Come alive. And don't be in that state of death, doing it your way. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end there of all ways of death. So when you're born again, the spirit man, he needs some help. You need to stay in your prayer closet, stay on your knees, and understand. And the, and the spirit man, he sees stuff. Proverbs chapter 29, verse number 18, the Bible said this. Where there's no vision, the people perish. The spirit man, he sees that you cannot, you cannot um, give God the cold shoulder. You cannot give God, turn God off and tell God, turn your back on God without consequences. Our God is a consuming fire. The spirit man sees this, but this soul man, he's, 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 he's sleep. And he needs, you heard expressions like um, wake up and smell, smell the ammonia. Well, he needs to wake up and smell the ammonia, glory to God, and see like life is not a bed of roses. Life is not a tiptoe to the tulips. Life is not a cakewalk, but life is serious. 
life, and there are serious consequences when you don't live life like God wants. If you don't want, if you don't, if you don't accept God's blessings, then there's the alternatives again, your worst nightmare. The worst thing you've ever been through in your life, the worst thing you've seen on television, the worst thing that you've read in books, it will be nothing but a Sunday school picnic compared to the judgment and the fire and the punishment that you're going to have to go through because you rejected God Almighty. Amen. So again, we are being called to revival, but sometimes we forget to mention if you don't accept revival in life, the, the alternative is bad, very bad. Amen. So, child of God, let us remember the fact that we are being called to great things, to great blessings, but don't take the choice of death. God bless you. God bless you. And I am um, Pastor Jackson here. wanted to um, let you know that we have a free book offer that we want to give you, a book that I have written. It is entitled Commitment, Who Needs It? And I felt like the body of Christ needs this book because sometimes people are not really committed like they should be, and they don't really understand what commitment is all about. But the Bible did say in the book of Luke chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus speaking, he said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. No, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. There's no wavering, but it's he's Lord of all or not Lord at all. And that's what we as Christians must get in our mind, that when we're serving God, then it is something that we should do diligently. The Bible said in the book of Hebrew, chapter 6, verse number, um, Hebrew chapter 11, verse number 6, it said this, that without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh unto God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Note that word diligent. That alludes to the fact Commitment is needed. The Bible also says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number um, 15, verse 58, Paul is saying this, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Inasmuch as you know that your work and labor in God is not in vain. Steadfast, unmovable. God has to teach us how to be steadfast. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 5, verse number 8, though he were a son, talking about Jesus, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. So we need to learn obedience. We need to learn the kind of God we're serving. We need to learn who God is. We need to learn that God wants commitment from us total, absolute, unwavering commitment. Just like when two people are standing in a marriage situation and they make a vow, keep your vows unto God. You need this book. Write me and I'll send it to you free and post paid. God bless. Sounds of Revival was brought to you by Perry Jackson Ministries and Greater Love International Church and Revival Center in Indianapolis at 6433 East Washington Street. Worship Sunday at 1030 a.m., Tuesdays at 730 p.m. For directions or to receive your free bi-monthly newsletter, call 317-796-0938 or email jackson-perry at att.net. To request today's program or sermon on CD or DVD, please send an offering of any amount to Perry Jackson Ministries, P.O. Box 26891, Indianapolis, Indiana 46226. Ask for the offer number on the screen.